Hi guys and welcome back to Midday Matcha with Livy. Clearly I am fucking Livy. Clearly I am fucking Livy. I keep just saying in my head, New York, stand the fuck up. Like I have no idea where that's coming from, but like it's just New York, stand the fuck up. All right, you guys, so who said that, that I just gathered that from? Anyways, this week's episode, I'm going to go into a week intro first, Libby, because that's how the fuck the podcast goes. So my week intro is that all my friends came from Million. I've talked about it for three fucking weeks at this point. You're like, we get it. We get it. Anyways, it was such a beautiful day. Like, it was such a beautiful time together. I'm so glad that they came. I don't have words to express how much I love those people, except my dumb fucking sister. Wait, sorry, guys. My dumb fucking sister got food poisoning. I was like, how so completely selfish who does that on the day of somebody's million celebration like that was just so wild to me i'm kidding you guys obviously that's a joke um no but like it was annoying like i'm not gonna lie like i was a little bit annoyed that my sister just decided to have food poisoning the day i had my huge celebration i'm kidding i'm not mad but like I am annoyed that I didn't get to spend it with her, but she did sign a lease, so she's moving here in a couple of weeks because she's obsessed with me and just wants to be with me, and I completely fucking get it. Alexa lamp off. Okay. Alexa lamp on. Okay. Just seeing what lighting looks like. You guys, I am back in... My home, because a lot of you said that you guys liked the home better than the studio, and for the specific episode that I'm doing today, I really did need to be in my home, so like, we're just, we're, we're feeling all the home vibes today. I did have like a three day hangover, and I'm really just like fucking over drinking at this point. I've been over drinking for the past year and a half. I'm just over it, but like these hangovers are just absolutely ridiculous. Like I hate it so much. So it was quite literally a three day hangover, quite literally. I've been watching a lot of Molly May on YouTube, okay? I'm not gonna lie. So if you keep hearing me talk like this a little bit, it's just cause the British accent's gonna come out because I'm a Molly May stan. But I do really want to get into this week's episode already. Like, I don't want to bore you guys with, like, a week intro of my amazing life. No, I'm kidding. But, like, I don't want to bore you with a week intro because this week's episode is what would Livy do? Me being Livy. Anyways, I went on Instagram and TikTok and I told you guys I was like, anything you want to know, like, any advice that you guys want, let me know because I'm going to answer it on this week's episode. So that's what we're going to do. I have your guys' voicemails. I was not expecting to get thousands. Like, I don't know sometimes I forget that like people watch my videos and stuff but like I really wasn't expecting to get so many voicemails so I had to sort through them and I just favorited some of my favorites so we'll get through that maybe I'll do an hour episode today normally it's like 45 minutes to 30 minutes but like normally it's actually strictly 30 minutes who the fuck am I lying to Anyways, I'm like, maybe we will do that. But yes, I have some good ones for you guys. There was a general theme of all of them, and I'll get into that at the end if I remind myself. But let's get into your guys' voicemails. Okay, I'm excited. Hey, Livy. So my current situation is that my ex of three years ago and my only ex hasn't been in a relationship since me continues to come back to me every once in a while and now he's back and I don't know what to do because he keeps putting false hope in me and his actions don't seem to match his words but at the same time he just says the right things to me so I don't know if I'm being played or not and all of his friends are telling me that he wants me or they're implying that he wants me but he continues not to text me at all throughout the week. Okay, hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up right here because never listen to a man's friends. I'm sorry. A man's friends are his friends. They're never going to tell you what you want to hear. Like, they're, I mean, they're only going to tell you what you want to hear. They're never going to tell you the fucking truth. So back that shit up. Don't listen to men's friends. Like, if he's like, their friends are like, oh my god, he loves you so much. He probably fucking hates you. Like, I just would never listen to a man's friends because they don't have my best interest. They have his best interest. Like, it's the same thing when why does that come to my head? But I was like the scenario of like, let's say one of my best friend cheats. I'm going to tell her boyfriend she loves him. Like I'm going to, I'm ride or die for my friends. I'm not ride or die for their partner, even if I'm friends with them. 
Another thing is, he's already showing you, like, I don't feel like you should really have to question that. Like, his actions are speaking louder than his words. You're like, I don't know what he thinks. Like, him not texting you and him coming back to you whenever the fuck he wants, don't allow that. Like, why would we allow that in our lives? You know, he just gets to come and go as he pleases. Absolutely fucking not. I would personally just not deal with that. I'd be like, you're not coming back into my life. What was it? My life. My life whenever you feel like it. Like, I'm not... It's not a revolving door. You don't just get to walk in and out whenever you feel like it. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. Because you have to have that boundary for yourself to stop that. Because that's... He's just... He knows it's convenient. He knows he can come back. He knows you're going to be there. He knows you're going to accept him with open arms. Fuck that. No. Change the narrative. Don't let him back into your life. And actually allow yourself to have, like, good people come into your life. Like, once you cut off this... I don't like that toxic little motherfucker. So... Yeah, that's Livy's advice. Here's another one. Hi, Livy. Um, my name's Mary. Hi, and, Mary. And um, thank you, first of all, for taking um, the time of your day to give us advices and sh stuff like that. Um, my uh, problem is that I know a guy and I'm talking to him. I've been talking to him for like five months and he's never taken me on a single date and I don't want to say it to him and he's literally like he's not really treating me right you know he does not compliment me he does not take me out he just ta he just talks to me and okay I'm sorry I had to cut it off there the way I throw a brick at his head like what do you mean why are you why are we tolerating men that like do not treat us right first of all hasn't taken you on a date baby no absolutely not like kick him to the curb too like not even complimenting you bare fucking minimum taking you on a date and complimenting you are the bare fucking minimum you want to know what i would do in that situation i would genuinely cut him off like i know it'll be hard i know all those things but like he's not even treating you right and it's the fucking beginning like you're not gonna want to go deeper in this trust me when i tell you you are not gonna want to go deeper in that but that's bare fucking minimum a date and tell me i look nice like, are you fucking kidding me? Absolutely not. You don't deserve that. Like, you don't deserve someone not doing those things for you. And, like, just hitting you up whenever he feels like it. Absolutely not. Guys, what the fuck? No. No. Which ex is your favorite ex and why? Okay, I get this question all the time on my TikTok about who is my favorite ex. I hate those fuckers. No, I do have, he's not like an ex, ex. Like I have three exes where it was like long-term relationship type shit. But I do have this one ex that I really did. Like he was just giving best, he wasn't like one of the three exes because those motherfuckers are like abusive. Um, he was just one of the guys that I was talking to and I really, like, I just had a great time with him. He took me on great dates. We ended super, like, mutually. Like, I can text him right now and be like, love you. Like, I, we just ended really well and, like, he's definitely my favorite. He's the guy, I don't know if you guys remember, it was, like, my first story time ever where I talked about I was ending things with him and I made him take photos of me. That was, that's the guy and we just had a great time together and it just, like, it, I can th end things like peacefully and cordially it's the fucking exes that don't allow me to anyways um but other than that i don't really have a favorite they all traumatize me in their own way but i do i do like that little man uh he was little so he's a little man to me anyways let's go to the next one and my ex is always wanting me up calling me names like anorexic and it's like but he always runs back to me and i want to give him another chance but everyone else I know says no he's not good for you it's too toxic but I want to give him another chance okay here's okay. what I'm going to say about that is that you clearly already have your mind made up that you're going to give him another chance go ahead do it give him another chance but don't expect a different outcome like go into that knowing hey he could break my fucking heart and if you're willing to risk that all do it like let him break your fucking heart like your friends are probably telling you not to do it. Probably makes you want to do it a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, if you you have your mind made up, you want to do it, so do it. But when you get hurt, don't come crying back to me. All right, let's go to the next one. Hey babes, love your videos. Really need some advice. So there's this girl that I was friends with last year. I'm in college. This is my second year of college, and I have a friend who I've been friends with for several years, who. Um, 
is basically working with this girl who I used to be friends with, and she's just being, like, a major cunt, like, genuinely the bitchiest, like, horrible person to her, treats her like a little piece of dog shit on the bottom of her shoe, and, like, my friend is, like, too nice to go and talk to her supervisor about it. So I just want some advice on how to get her to stand up for herself. Like, I know that it's kind of her prerogative. Like, she has to decide. But, like, goddamn, this girl is pissing me off. And I hate the way she treats my friend. And I told her that. And I cut her off because of how she was treating this girl. Because I don't want to be associated with somebody being a piece of shit. But, okay. um, long oh. story short, how do I help this situation without being annoying? Okay. I love you so very much. I, I hope you're having a wonderful, beautiful day. I love you. I hope you're having a wonderful, beautiful day. There's really, like, you can't, I always say this, like, you, I can't, like, just inject my confidence or my, like, something into somebody, but you can make your friend feel, like, valid for doing, for sticking up for herself. Like, I completely get that. If someone's treating my friend like shit, like, I'm going to be like, bitch, you better stand the fuck up for yourself or I'm going to beat the shit out of somebody. Like, that's just what we're doing. Um, not actually. I could see my mother watching that and being like, Olivia, you have anger issues. Mom, fuck off. Anyways, if your friend's not sticking up for yourself, herself, I would just say, like, give her the confidence to stick up for herself and be like yo speak the fuck up like we're all here to back you up kind of thing like if this bitch is being a cunt stick the fuck up to her like say something do something that's just that i feel like that's how i'd handle that situation yeah i don't really think i'd insert myself depending on how bad it is because like you just don't want to insert your insert yourself in something like that but that's what i would do that's what i would do Hi, Livy. Love you so much. Just wanted to ask, do you have any advice for people getting back into dating after a long-term relationship? And how would you, like, go about it? Okay, after a long-term relationship, first of all, I'd give myself months to heal. Like, I'd give myself the time that I felt like I needed to heal. But I'm guessing since you asked me that, you're probably at that point. Getting back into dating, honestly, just, like, fucking... It's... It sucks a little because, like, just know your first couple dates aren't going to be, like, the best dates in the entire world. But just get yourself out there and, like, experience them. You know, like, go on a couple hinge dates just to do it, to, like, get your feet wet. And then you'll probably meet some people that you actually really fuck with. But my biggest advice is just, like, actually doing it, getting on the apps. Like, I know it can, like, be daunting and scary and it kind of, like, sucks, especially coming from a long-term relationship. But... Yeah, I would just get myself out there and I would just like go on a couple dates. It might suck. It might be fucking amazing. Who knows? And just like expect like there might be some bad dates, but there might be some fucking amazing dates. But you've got to get yourself on Hinge. you got to get liking to the men's DMs. Make sure like get some bad bitch photos. Those always make me feel great. Put them on your Hinge. Put them on your Instagram and get ready to pop that pussy okay that's like literally what i would do is just you just kind of have to like do it it's like exposure therapy it's just like put yourself out there go to a bar go out with your girls approach a guy like i love doing that when i'm really single because it's like in person but I, okay why did i get so happy but i'm like just like i don't know i think about that when i'm like i'm newly single and then i just like go and i like flare with a man it's like oh my god i forgot how fucking gorgeous i am and everyone else believes it too you know, because I feel like when I'm in, like, a relationship and you just get out of one, you're like, I just, like, lost my person. Like, I just feel, da, da, da. So, it's kind of nice to get that validation in public from men, too. But, like, just put yourself out there, you know? Like, I feel like it's the time for you to really, one, heal yourself, two, have some fucking fun. Like, you were just in a relationship. Like, have some fun. And, three, just really get in touch with what you want for your future, you know? And, like, what you want for yourself, what you want for the man that you're going to date or woman. Or they them you know i don't judge but yeah that's what i would do i would just like pop my pussy in the club no i wouldn't do that i would just get myself out there and just go on the dates even though i really don't like want to hi libby i'm nikki i'm 25 from london my problem is that i broke up with my boyfriend last year told everyone what a trash pile of human garbage he is um and everyone said that I'd made such a good choice and um, yeah everyone just thinks she's awful and um, now we're back together and we've been back together for quite a few months you know, it's ever happened to me and I'm not just saying that he genuinely is we just went through a rough patch um, and I don't know how 
to tell everyone that I got back with him. So. Okay, I always tell my friends this. I always say, like, don't hide anything from me because I'm not going to judge you. Like, we've all been there. Nikki, let me tell you, we've all fucking been there. We've all, I've, I've especially done that. Like, talked the most shit about my ex-boyfriend and been like, he can choke and die. Next day, I'm choking on his dick. You know what I mean? We've all been there. Um, what I would personally do is I would just... If you're going to get back together with a boyfriend that you talk shit about, you have to own it. You have to be like, we're back together. Do you have shit to say? I'd love to fucking hear it. Like, if you own it, nobody's really going to question it. It might not feel great knowing everyone might be judging you a little bit. If you're like, this is what I'm doing. You can say whatever you want. This is what's best for me. And if they're true friends, they'll support you no matter what. Like, my friends were there when I was back together with back and forth with my ex. And, like, they really had... <laughs> no choice but to be supportive because they're like Livy's gonna do what Livy wants to fucking do and like Nikki's gonna do what Nikki wants to do and Nikki if you're happy about it just be like this is what I want to do I'm happy right now I don't really give a fuck about any of your opinions but like thank you guys for being there so much for me and you'll like uh, be there for me no matter what but yeah we're back together I'm gonna own it I love this person that's that like I don't really feel like it needs to be a whole like oh my god like we're back together it's like no you're back together with this person fucking own it like that's for any relationship We've all been there where we like talk shit about our boyfriends to our friends, which like I also realized don't always talk shit about your boyfriends to your friends because they are going to always defend you and be with you. So then like when the fight's over and you're like, oh, well, but I love him again. They're like, but remember the time that he tried to fuck another bitch in the club on a Saturday? And it's like, oh my God. So it's like, talk to like your mom or like your therapist or someone like that about those situations but I completely get it like talking shit about my ex and then being like so we're actually getting married like no we've all done it Nikki so just own it I just feel like just own it what do you do if your boyfriend is very stingy like very stingy like break up with him I don't know like that's not a life that I want to live like I'm not a stingy person so if like my boyfriend's stingy I'm gonna be like get the fuck out of my way like that's just not something I want for myself because like if I'm not a stingy person and you are like then what the fuck are we doing here what is another one so um maybe this one will get through if the other one doesn't get through I actually have a lot of problems in my life right now um but this one is about my mom and um I actually haven't talked to her in about four months I think because I wanted to go live um by myself and I couldn't stand my stepdad and I also haven't talked to my dad because I don't know I feel like he really wasn't there so I haven't talked to them and I am living my life as an adult even though I'm 19 I'm paying my own rent i'm living alone i'm paying for my food i'm doing all of that i'm working i'm going to school i'm literally doing everything don't have time for anything else um but my question is my mom wants to meet up um actually in a week and i don't know how to respond to that i don't know if, if i even have like if I, if I should go I, I i do miss her but like i don't know if i can handle it right now and i don't know what i should say so if you if you can help me with that that would be great um i love you so much i love your videos they hype me up like they make my day better um so i'm looking forward to your podcasts and to your advice if you even hear this i love you oh my god i kind of want to cry a little bit like i don't know why that's making me so emotional but like i'm so fucking proud of you that you moved out and you did that all on your own i think that's absolutely amazing and you should be so proud of yourself i completely understand what it's like to leave um leave a household that you no longer wanted to be in and especially like to provide for yourself at such a young age is like a really hard thing and like trust me when i tell you it will get easier like i was i was in that position not i still had some support from my mom but like just working my ass off having time for nothing else i completely understand that but in regards to meeting up with your mom i feel like you did say you miss her you know maybe go in with an open mind and an open heart i just think it's all about what you can handle mentally and what you want to man and what you want to handle mentally so like 
if you feel like you can do it and you can go see her, like go right ahead, go do that. I think it could be very healing for you and I think it could be great for you. But if you also don't wanna see her and you're just like not feeling it, you think it's gonna drain you and just like not be good, then don't go see her. I think either option is fine, but you just really need to listen to what you wanna do. But I love you so much and I'm like genuinely so fucking proud of you that you are doing all those things for yourself at such a young age. Like you should genuinely be so beyond proud of yourself. Like that's an extremely hard thing to do. So I'm so, so, so happy for you. Hey like, girl, how's it going? First of all, thank you for allowing your fans to have the space to ask you for advice. Some of us really need it and I'm one of them. So right now I'm really going through it. Um, with the whole trying to find a job right now just as a majority of people in this country are going through right now so I wanted to see how do you keep such a positive mindset during really difficult times where it feels like all you're getting is nothing but bad news I've heard of the mentality of think like you're a lucky girl and things will come your way have you tried that does that work for you is that just another form of manifestation let me know what your thoughts are thanks girl Okay, I definitely feel you on that. Like, I've definitely been at that point in my life where, like, the job interviews and it's like no, no, no after no. So I completely understand that. Um, I have done I'm the luckiest girl in the world and everything always works out for me. I mean, because it does. That is another form of manifestation. To stay positive during hard times, I think, is really hard. But I always look at, like, if you don't get a job or, like, something doesn't work out the way you want it and you really wanted that, that's just, like, a redirection, you know? Like, rejection is redirection into what's actually meant for you. You're going to get a job. It will be okay. I know it feels like it might not feel like that right now, but, like, you will get a job. Everything will work itself out. But any rejection you're facing is just redirection for what's meant to be in your life and what's on the right path. Like, you completely have... A destiny something's meant for you a hundred percent like that's where I get a little woo-woo you know what I mean but like you do there's a destiny for you you're the right thing's gonna come at the right time and I know that's a really hard thing to keep remembering when you're in a situation like that but where you just feel like a little bit hopeless but I just always remember that like it's gonna come for me like the right thing's gonna come at the right time I might feel a little bit hopeless but yeah it's going to come for me because it's meant for me. So I do like the lucky girl syndrome one. I think that's a good one. But I always just like um, daily affirmations. I talk about my daily affirmations all the time. That's another form of manifestation. I say everything three times. Like for the past two years, I was like, I have over a million TikTok followers. And now I do. But that's just like a form of manifestation. So I, if I was you, I would be like, I have a well-paying job that I love. Like I have a well-paying job. You just say it three times every day. I do monthly manifestations like that of my daily affirmations. So I think that's a great way if you're looking for a manifestation method, but also just remember rejection is redirection and it's all going to work itself out. Like don't give up. It's a hard time. I completely feel you on that, but like give yourself some grace too. You know, you are working hard to get a job and it's just, you have to remember like, it's just the job market. It's like not you whatsoever. Like the job market is completely fucking ass right now. So just, yeah. But if you want to say you're the luckiest girl in the world, fucking say it. It definitely helps. I do love that one. Hey Libby, I really need your advice because Recently, I found out that this piece of shit male has been messing with me and two of the females. And last night, I said, fuck you, I'm leaving. I blocked him on everything. And I just want to know if I'm in the wrong for that because he was acting like he was a victim and how I should be in his business when I called him out for um, hurting me and two of the females. Um, absolutely not. No, you're not in the wrong for that what so fucking ever. He had like three bitches. Like, absolutely not. Are you in the wrong? Call his ass out. He's just playing the victim because that's like a form of manipulation. He just wants you to feel bad for him. You are not in the fucking wrong. And I would tell you if you were, call him a little fucking bitch and move on with your day. You do not need a little bitch like that in your life either. Absolutely the fuck not. It's a manipulation tactic. He's a little bitch. Having like three girlfriends at once is not cute. He can choke. Hey girl, I was wondering what would you do if your ex that was abusive and crazy and just like completely psychotic um leaked a video of you and then went into your email trying to act like you sent it out. What would you do? 
I don't know what to do. At that point, honestly, I would just get the police involved or I'd threaten the police. I'd be like, keep doing this shit. I'm taking like, this is all just evidence for me to take that to the, this is all just evidence for me to take to the police so I can have a case against you. So like, keep doing this dumb shit. I feel like the more you fight with it, like, because I, my toxic crazy exes did some like fucked up things to me. But the more you fight with it, the more they just want your attention. But like if I would just act super serious and be like, no, no, I'm taking note of every single thing. I have these screenshots, this, this, and this. I'm going to the police and you, I'm putting your name down too. And I'm going to get one, an order of protection. And two, that's illegal for them to do that too. So I would completely threaten the cops. Like I would 100% do that. First of all, I love you. So I think. Love you crushing on this guy and we finally did the deed and it was the most amazing sex ever so i'm trying not to catch feelings so i told him we're gonna strictly keep it as just fucking because one i have a child and he doesn't want kids so i don't even want to mess with that and my ex broke my heart so yeah anyways um yeah he took me on a date. We've been going on dates, and I'm calling for this kid. Hey. I don't know what to do. Because Wait, it's cute. I love that. Are you kidding? I know you don't want to catch feelings, probably, because you've been hurt in the past. Like, haven't we all? Haven't we all, girly? But that he's taking you on dates and like he's making an effort. And I know you don't want to catch feelings, but I think that's probably just the part of you that's scared of being hurt. I understand the kid thing too, not personally, but I do get that. Maybe just have a conversation like, hey, I have a kid. I'm starting to have feelings for you. If like you don't see yourself having kids or anything like that in the future, then like, and I know you're like, bitch, that's so dramatic for where we're at. But no, also like, girl, good sex. You and I both know that hard to come by like hold on to that motherfucker no but also i think maybe you're just a little bit scared of being hurt i think maybe this is the time to be open and vulnerable and just be aware of your feelings the whole time and make sure he's aware of your feelings the whole time i feel like that's the only way we can really prevent getting hurt but also i think there's a really good reminder that like you've been hurt before and you came out of that and you're good now you're having bomb dick like so if you do get hurt again good things will come your way but i'm sensing for you that you need to be a little bit more open and vulnerable with him and let him in a little bit more like i think it's totally fine to catch feels like you're getting bomb dick and dates girl what are you doing like let him in like pop that pussy open for him that was creepy i didn't mean like pop that pussy open for him but like i think you just need to be a little bit more open and vulnerable like that's where i and i know nobody was expecting me to say that was i expecting myself to say that no but you just you guys forget like i am an emotional ass bitch too. I'm a fucking cancer, you guys. So I do have emotions and feelings, but like, I just, I don't know. He's, I, it seems cute. It seems like why not let it happen? You know, like why not? Fuck getting hurt. We've all been hurt. We're all gonna get hurt, okay? But let it him in, especially if the dick is bomb. Hi. So around Christmas time, I was on my dad's phone trying to buy a gift for my mom and all of a sudden i see a notification and i didn't think much of it um i'm scrolling through his apps to look for uh the amazon app and all of a sudden i saw tinder and my mom and my dad have been married for 20 something years um haven't told anybody having uh confronted him about it haven't said anything to my mom the only person that knows about it is my best friend so i want to know what would you do and if you can give me advice thank you Honestly, I hated my father, so like that would have just been the funnest time in the world for me. But I'm thinking like you love both your parents. Holy fuck, it just felt like there was an earthquake. Sorry. Sorry, that was so off topic. Um, I would honestly that's a really fucking hard one. I would just <sighs> what parent do you like more? Honestly, that's what I would do. Like, if you like your mom more, I'd go straight to my mom and be like, hey, this is that. But if you like your dad more, I'd be like, dad, I found Tinder on your phone. Like, what the fuck is up with that? Like, I was scrolling through Amazon. I found Tinder. Um, I'm going to tell mom, like, what the fuck? That's a really, really hard one because I don't come from a healthy family. So, like, I would have loved to see that shit to get my father out. Anyways, I, yeah, at that point, 
I would just or you know what I would do I would just like this is fucked I would anonymously email your mom like I would just pretend I'm one of the girls that your dad met with on tinder and then your mom's just gonna go through his phone and, and see tinder or I would be like mom go through dad's phone and like look for amazon for me real quick and then or I would do it with her and I'd pull up tinder and I'd show I'd be oh my god dad is tinder I had no idea mom like I had no idea that is what I would do so then it's not your fault whatsoever and you're not in the middle of any of this and yeah I think that's 100% what I would do Hi, Livy. I'm just wondering what to do in a situation where your best friend is um, dating a boy who is honestly absorbing, like, a lot of her life, and she hates saying no to him because he'll get mad, and I just think it's very toxic and not healthy. So I was just wondering what I could say or what I could do to help the situation, or should I just stay out of it? <sighs> That's like the hardest thing in the world and like I've had to learn this with all of my friends. It's and I think it's just something that you learn with age is that you do have to stay out of it because your friend has to make those mistakes for herself and like deal with that relationship for herself and learn those lessons for herself. There's really not much you can do even though you want to and I totally get that. But yeah, I think you just have to be there and be supportive no matter what happens. If she decides to like stay with him, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm so excited. If she decides to leave him, be like, oh yeah, fuck him, he's a loser. Like, I always thought that. Like, you kind of just have to let your friends ride out the toxic relationships and then you're going to be there for them no matter what. But the more you hate on the man, the more that they don't feel comfortable talking to you. And I don't think that's healthy. Like, I think that your friend should always want to be able to feel like they can talk to you. Like, I think that's the number one thing. So don't hate on the man just always be there for her good or bad it's it's a difficult one because like you hate a whack-ass motherfucker but you gotta let your friends write out the toxic relationships and you can't really say shit about the boyfriend until it's like done done and then you're like all right we all hated him yeah get that bitch out of here you know what i mean so it's gonna be one of those situations but just be there for her like no matter what because she probably really needs a friend more than you could imagine because I've been the bitch that's in the toxic relationship and I've also been the bitch that's like get the fuck out of it you know what I mean and I've also been the bitch that's like I'm gonna let you do you and I'm gonna be here no matter what and I just realized the most successful is being like I'm gonna be here for you no matter what and so sometimes we have to watch our friends be dumb bitches and it sucks but then you can always be like remember when you were the dumbest bitch look at you now look at you now Vesty look at you now so yeah it's a rough one Okay. Hi, Lippy. Um, you're everything I aspire to be, so I figured I would ask for your advice on a boy situation I'm a little stuck on right now. So, um, this boy and I matched on Tinder. He went to my school. He's a year older than me, but I did not know him. Um, we went out one night, and then the night after, he came over to my apartment for a few hours. Nothing happened um, on my account. And then a few days later, I left the country for the summer um, for my study abroad program. And uh, we didn't talk. When I got back, he kind of ghosted me, which was like, okay, whatever. Um, and then he decided to respond a few weeks later. We started talking a little bit back and forth, but I was out of town again. And then he ghosted me again. <laughs> and then basically, so I was always kind of in the back of my mind because I hadn't seen him at all during this time. Then um, a few months later, he decided, I decided to reach out again. He responded very eagerly, um, and I saw him just a few weeks ago. Um, he spent a long night at my apartment, and um, now I like him, and he's gone dark on me again. No, no, no. Am I just... No, no, no. Wait, what did you say? Being delusional, or does it make sense that I'm a little hung up on him? Okay, I get being hung up on him. You had, like, an intimate night together. You guys have had, like, a little bit of a thing. But this fucker has ghosted you three times. He is not worth it. Like, babes, do better for yourself. Because, like, he's just... And I get being hung up on him. Like, I totally understand that. But there comes a point where you're like, all right, I, I like this person a lot. But he is a whack-ass motherfucker. He is not treating me correctly. He has ghosted me three times. I need to walk away. Because I deserve 20 times better. Like, there has to be a point where you're like, I deserve better. You're not delusional for being hung up on him. Like, we've all been there, girly. But, like, step away from the situation and, like, realize that you do deserve better. Because he's already showing you he's, like, a weak-ass, immature bitch by the amount of times that he has ghosted you. Like, that is not cute whatsoever. So, 
let's get away from him. But like, I get it, girly. I get it being hung up on him, but I just think you deserve better. So that's where I'm at. Hey, Louie, what would you do if you were in a situation with a man or boy and he kept asking you if he found other men attractive and you clearly didn't because you didn't give any kind of signal or anything but he keeps asking you these dumb questions if you found so-and-so attractive what would you do because i find it kind of annoying that is fucking annoying i'd be like no honestly though because like if someone kept asking me if i like if a man i'm seeing is like do you find this person attractive do you find this person attractive i'm like yeah i do and I bet he is a big fucking dick too. Is that what you wanted to hear? Cause it's like, what are you trying to hear from this? You know what I mean? I feel like when someone asks you over and over and again, like, do you find that person attractive? One, obviously the man is insecure, but two, I'm gonna give you an answer you don't wanna fucking hear. So you never ask me again. I'm gonna be like, yup. And I wanna see what he looks like naked. He's so hot. I would have his babies. Like, that's the thing. He's just insecure and it's really unattractive, but I would literally just be like, okay, one, you're being super insecure right now and I don't like that you keep asking me what if I find people attractive like I'm with you I spend my time with you I'm clearly fucking with you so that should be enough like you there's no need to be insecure because it just sounds like he's insecure that you don't want to be with him then too I would be like yeah no I find him so fucking hot is that what you wanted to hear that I've been dreaming about sucking his penis like is that what you want to hear babe because it just to like get him to shut the fuck up because I th there comes a point where like no you being like no 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 it's like okay but does he he's not understanding that so it's like you got to do one of the two one tell him he's being insecure as fuck two being like and you can obviously do it in a nicer way you don't have to be a bitch like me but two just being like you're being really fucking um annoying and insecure or I want to, yeah, I want to have this man's babies. How did you know? How did you know this whole time I wanted to fuck this man? I mean, it would, like, that's like a really rude thing to do, honestly. But like, God damn, there's only so many times you can ask that. Hey, Libby, I just need advice on how to talk to guys. Like, I want to start. Like, I just, like, I want to embarrass myself. So that's why. Love you, by the way. <laughs> Love you. Um, just talk. Like, honestly, like, that's just about... I think we need to drop the the narrative of, like, I'm going to embarrass myself. You're probably not going to fucking embarrass yourself. Like, there's nothing to be embarrassed by. I would just be like, hey, how are you? No, I wouldn't. I would just... I like to go up and just start a conversation on, like, something that's happening if I'm seeing that person in person. Like, let's say they're at... If I'm going to up to someone at the bar, I'd be like, okay, like, you decided to wear that shirt tonight? And they'd be like, why? And then it just sparks, like, a little convo. But then again, I am, like, a little bit more bold. Or, like, honestly, if I see a man out, I will do this thing where, like, I point at them. <laughs> I point at them, and I'm like, come here. You know, and it's really... <laughs> And it's a really you have to be watching a YouTube to see that but I just like mm -hmm, come here come here Um, and then I'm like, how are you? Like, what are you doing? What are you up? That's like the flirty version and it's a little bit like dominant a little bit cute But it's like, you know what you want, but honestly like just there's nothing to be nervous about Honestly, just talk talk like you would to one of your girlfriends. There's really nothing to be nervous about loves absolutely nothing Okay, so I'm pretty sure my boyfriend he, we've been dating for about 10 months, 10 and a half months, and I'm pretty sure he has feelings for another person. I'm 99% sure he has feelings for another person, and whenever I ask him, he's like, no, no, I love you, babe, I love you, but he doesn't. I don't think he does. Cool. I just don't know what to do. Oh, help me. Um me singing with you anyways girl you just answered your own question like you're like i know he has feelings for another girl well i'd be like number one what is making you think that number two go get evidence like go through that motherfuckers i'm not gonna say to go through his phone i was gonna say that don't go through his phone i would just confront him and i would confront him about the girl as well and if you know the girl i would personally talk to her and like hey because i've spoken like what's up with that you know what i mean i would probably do that but you seem like you already know so if that's the case girly dip like leave like what you deserve better than that okay 
so um what would you do if you were in a really bad toxic relationship and all of a sudden there's this guy who comes along and he's the sweetest thing ever and you really think he's a good guy but you're scared that past trauma from that old toxic relationship is going to mess everything up what would you do and how would you push through because i'm scared you guys i think we're all scared i think a lot of us have come from like even just in general like come from relationships that might have not been the best and bitch imagine how the fuck i feel dating you guys hear my story times anyways but yeah i think everyone's just a little bit scared but you do have to like push through you know you do have to you can't let the past ruin the current thing or like a good thing whatsoever you can't let that happen so I honestly just recommend like pushing through those feelings and like being open and honest with the guy too like hey I'm feeling this because I did have a fucked up past so like this is that you don't have to say it like that but don't let somebody don't let your past thing that person's already taken so much from you and done so much to you don't let that person get in the way of something that could be really amazing and really great I just think open communication with that person the new person that you're talking to is going to be super key number one and then number two just allowing yourself to fall and be with somebody again so yeah i think those are really important we're gonna do one more maybe two hi Livy. i was wondering if you could give me some advice on how to phase out toxic friendships um i don't feel like friendships are talked about enough and i definitely have a few friends that only really use me when it's convenient for them and I was just wondering if you have any advice on how to phase out friends. Thank you. Yes, I do. I've left a toxic friend group before, and I think everyone was toxic for each other in the friend group. But I don't I don't think I'm proud of the way I left it. <laughs> um, my advice would be I slowly distance. I think I normally do that, or I slowly distance. It's like, girl, I haven't talked to you in forever. But I'm really big on like not having toxic friends. I have a really small circle of like my best friends that like I handpicked to be in my life because I love these people, they're supportive, they're caring, they love me, I love them, I can share good news with them, we can be supportive of each other. Like there's never, I'm never gonna entertain a friendship anymore where it's not healthy or beneficial, not even beneficial, just like a, not a healthy relationship. Cause like friendships mean the world to me. Like when I have friends, I treat them as if they're my family. Like I give 100% to everybody in my life, so. What I recommend doing is I recommend slowly fading away or you could honestly just be straight up honest and be like, honestly, I don't really want to have a friendship with you anymore. It's been super draining for me and it's that's a really hard one because a lot of people take that super personally. I would say like friendship breakups are harder than normal breakups 100% and there's no like correct way. Is someone fucking knocking? There's no like correct way to do it or like good way to do it. But you got to put yourself first and like you obviously know you don't want this person in your life. So I would definitely just fade away slowly with texting. So that would be like the number one thing that I would do and like communication and like hanging out in general. And I would start to make new friends and go hang out with other new friends. But I think having the conversation of being like I like don't want to be friends anymore is like a really difficult one to have because nobody's ever going to take that well because i'm like why 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 you know what i mean so i just recommend finding new friends slowly fading away that whole thing is what i really do recommend and i there's no time for toxic friends we're like not going to do that so definitely fade away all right this is the last one hi libby um i need some help i need some advice on how you quit kind of identifying with your dad and the trauma that you know oh. happened and how to just move on from it and not let that just like drag you back and drag you down i really need some help you don't have to be deep with this one if you don't want to because you know you i'm gonna be you know i'm gonna be deep yeah let me know i Love will you. i will you know i'm gonna be deep i knew that I didn't want a relationship with him. I think that's the biggest thing. Once you know you don't want a relationship with him, or if you do, like those are two different things. So if you want a relationship, definitely work on the relationship. But if you know you don't want a relationship with him, the biggest thing is forgiveness. And it's like the hardest thing. I spent hours in therapy just writing a letter of like 
almost like a thank you letter I remember my therapist had me write. I was like, why are we doing this? And she was like, it'll help. And I was like, okay, like of just everything. Like I just honestly turned the situation with my dad into a positive as if like, if that didn't happen, then I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. Like that is how I always look at everything. But definitely writing a letter being like, I forgive you for everything that you did. My dad did some speakable, unspeakable, horrible things where the abuse, abuse was like terrible and it was, yeah, like it was horrible. But I had to forgive not for him, but for me. Like that was just simply for me. So I don't feel weighed down. I don't feel like heavy in my heart. Like I know right now, this is gonna sound super dark, but like if he was to go, you know, leave the earth I wouldn't have any regret or any remorse really because I've forgiven that person I've acknowledged that person's no longer gonna be in my life it's honestly like grieving a death like when you're letting go of a parent that's toxic it is like grieving a death a hundred percent because but a little bit easier I'm not gonna lie because you're like I never liked that fucker anyways anyways but you're letting go of that and you do have to forgive for yourself not for him, but for you. And you just have to let it make you better, not bitter. Oh, I'm a Pinterest board today, who would have thought? But yeah, once I let that make me like a better person and it wasn't holding anything in me, there was no hate in my heart because there was a lot of hate in my heart for like a little minute, a little quick minute. But once I decided I didn't want him to be in my life, it was pretty easy for me to detach and to go my separate ways. And I never look back and like, Think of like, what if I did have a dad? I never think about what the fuck. I didn't need a dad. I've gotten enough love from my mom, my sisters, myself. Like I just honestly did not need one. So yeah, I there's a lot of forgiveness that comes with that, but a lot of like letting go. A lot of letting go of the horrible things that happened. Like I think that's with honestly any situation in my life. Like the abuse that I endured or the essay, I, anything like that with um, ex-boyfriends and stuff like that. I had to write that letter of forgiveness and like said all the things, <clears throat> said all the things that they did and like still having to forgive that. Like you gotta forgive people, not for them, but for you to move forward so you can live your best life and they're not holding you back anymore is the biggest thing. Why is my voice cracking? I feel like that was a good one to end it on, you guys. I personally feel like that was a great one. So, mm. if I didn't get to yours, I'm sorry. Let me know if you want me to do another part of this episode. I did like this. This was a really cute little unique way to do this and talk to you guys. It felt super personal. I really love having that like relationship with you guys where I feel like we're friends. Because I we are fucking friends. So, that's that. But, yeah. Let me know if you want me to do a part two of this. I definitely can. I have voicemails for days. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for like leaving the voicemails. I think it was absolutely insane. But I do love every single one of you. Oh, the overall fucking theme of this was tolerating stuff from shitty men. Like all these voicemails were like, what do I do if like this man like hasn't texted me back in like six months, but like I still like him. Bitch, leave him. There's a million men in this world or women or whatever you're into. There's a million people in this world. Why are we gonna settle and like be like beg for the bare minimum of whack ass motherfuckers? I'm never gonna support that. So like, if that was one of your voicemails, just know right now you can do better for yourself and that's exactly what you should be doing. I am not tolerating this talk anymore. Of like, I like, we text like every three weeks and like I just really love him and he goes to me five times. Bitch, no, get a grip, do better for yourself, have higher standards for yourself because you deserve better and you know that. Anyways, I love every single one of you. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, that was it for this week's episode. I love you guys. Bye. Ah. Uh, ah. <laughs> okay, we're done. What would Livy do? <sighs> Hi, YouTube. It's our little alone time together. <laughs> so creepy. How is everybody doing? All right, you know I have to do a thumbnail. I like hate doing a thumbnail with you guys. I've never done peace signs in years. What the fuck was that, Livy? Anyways, stay gorgeous, stay blessed. 
Oh, he's working on the roof this whole time. I thought he was like knocking on my door. So embarrassing. I hope he heard my episode and I hope he really loved it. The man that's working on my roof. All right, I love every single one of you. I'm glad that you guys got to watch the YouTube version because I feel like in the YouTube version, you got to see my facial expressions of being like, what the f was like, I'm like, the fuck was that? Anyways, um, I love you guys. Rate the podcast five stars. Oh, make sure you're subbed on uh, YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I love every single one of you. You're so beautiful. I hope you know how beautiful you are. I'm in my Molly May era. All right, I love you all. Bye.